Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. We have people coming in, so I'm going to give it uh, a minute or so for more to join, and then we will begin our webinar. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today for the Amazon Seller Webinar. We're very glad you could take the time out of your busy schedules to join us. If you have any questions about the presentation today um, while we're presenting, please submit in the chat box or in the Q&A and we will try to get to your questions at the end of the presentation. If we don't have a chance uh, to respond to your specific question. At the end, you can um, submit a support ticket and we have also contact information at the end of the uh, slides for you. But we will try to get to everybody's questions today. We will also be recording this session if you have to leave early or would like to share with a colleague. And this can also be found after on Send 7 Connect. Now I'm going to hand it over to Jen, who is the technical support team leader here at Sin7, who will be presenting the webinar today. Thank you, Marisa. Hey, good morning and good afternoon, everyone who's joining us today for this Amazon seller webinar. Uh, so my name is Jatin Puri, and I'm the technical support team leader here at Sin7. Uh, and today I'm going to run you through the uh, Amazon seller webinar. Uh, I hope you guys are excited because Amazon is a great platform for you to expand your business on and for thriving uh, your product business. Uh, so to begin with, I'm just going to go through uh, a slide deck that we've created for this webinar, and then I'm going to take you through some interactive demo on our trial account here at Sin7. So the agenda for today's webinar, uh, I'm going to be covering the overview of what the Amazon seller integration is all about. We're gonna be covering the Amazon seller dashboard. We're gonna be talking about the setup and references that uh, could be uh, handy for you when you're setting up this integration on Sin7. We're gonna also be talking about how you would be using Amazon seller integrations. And then we're gonna be jumping into Q&A. So the latter part, the setup and reference and using the Amazon seller integrations, I'm gonna take you through an interactive demo for that. So to begin with, uh, what's an Amazon, what is Amazon seller? So it's a platform for selling your goods on amazon.com marketplace. And it's, it provides you uh, with a massive audience, uh, a target audience of confident customers who want to buy your products. So uh, as a company, we are always wanting our customers to thrive uh, and uh, help them achieve their business goals. So by uh, providing this channel of sale, we believe that uh, you can reach out to your target audience and can swiftly scale up your business. So Amazon seller with Sin7 allows you the following. So first, it helps you download sales orders into Sin7. Second, it downloads uh, customers' uh, uh, information. Uh, third, it updates the order status from Sin7 to Amazon. So once the order has been fulfilled on Sin7, uh, you want to tell your customers that these are your tracking details. So it helps you update those details to Amazon seller. Fourth, it helps you update stock levels from Sin7 to Amazon. So it's really important for uh, you to know the correct reflection of the stock numbers when you're selling on any e-commerce platform, be it Amazon, be it Shopify and, and so on and so forth. And the last one is it helps you download products from Amazon seller into Sin7 so that uh, there is a, a linkage between uh, these uh, products, between the two platforms, and you are able to sell them, uh, sync stock. So on the right-hand side over here, uh, there is a small workflow diagram that has been created. So it talks about uh, various things. So the first thing is helps you update stock from Sin7 to Amazon. Uh, and from Amazon to Sin7, you can download products, you can download orders. And uh, once, the once the order has been dispatched, you can actually update the dispatched orders 
to Amazon. Uh, on this slide, uh, you would be uh, provided this slide deck at the end. Uh, I've uh, linked a help article that talks uh, uh, briefly and gives you an overview of uh, what the Amazon seller integration on SIN7 does for you. Uh, moving on, uh, I'm gonna talk through the Amazon seller uh, dashboard. And here is an image on the right-hand side on how this uh, dashboard looks like. I'm gonna be deep diving into this uh, more when I go through an interactive demo with all of you. Uh, so there are a few tiles that I uh, want to talk about. So the first tile is the order activity tile. So it displays the number of recent orders and the date that orders were last downloaded into SIN 7. And uh, by clicking on the link, uh, which says download orders, it uh, helps you downloading orders from Amazon seller. So the orders that are in the pipeline waiting to be downloaded into SIN 7, when you click on this button, you can actually download these orders. So in the demo later on, I'll also show you how you can uh, get SIN7 to automatically download these orders as well. So you don't have to click on this link over and over again. The second tile is on the right hand side, which is the order status tile. Now this shows the date that orders were last updated from SIN7, uh, along with the number of orders downloaded today and in the last seven days. Clicking on update dispatched orders will update recently completed orders on SIN7 to the Amazon seller. Um, and you also have the order status error. So if by any chance uh, you receive an error while updating the orders from SIN7 to Amazon, you can actually look into that list by clicking on that link. The third tile that I want to talk about is the stock activity tile. And it basically, uh, highlights the popular pr products that are low in stock and may need to be reordered. So it gives you a brief overview that uh, if your most popular product is uh, depleting in stock value, you need to just replenish that. And it also displays any errors that are returned when at attempting to update the stock. So updating stock, as I mentioned early on, is a key element when you're selling online. Um, so this, this uh, stock activity tile would help you immensely. The fourth tile is the stock update status. Now it basically tells us the status on what's been updated uh, and uh, it has two functions on it. So one is the update recent modified stock and the second one is update all stock. So update all stock usually would be clicked when you are updating the stock information for the first time into the Amazon seller platform. And update recent modified stock helps you update the recent modified uh, stock information. So consider you've got an order, uh, which has got uh, two SKU items that have been um, uh, asked for. You don't want to update all the stock uh, at that time. You would want to just update uh, the recent modified stock of those two SKUs because uh, the query that runs behind updating all stock is a longer query. And we want you to not oversell on your e-commerce platform, uh, be it Amazon or Shopify. So we do have this option of just running a smaller query and updating the recent modified stock. Then we move on to the next tile, which is the product activity tile. And here you can see which order lines have products that have not been mapped and which products exist on Amazon seller, but not on SIN 7. So consider you've got some orders uh, and uh, for any reason, the mapping between uh, products on Amazon seller and SIN 7 is not present. So if you download an order, there might be an error, which, would, which might say that this queue is not found on SIN 7. So those order lines would come up under the order lines not mapped. And you can cl clearly go into that uh, order reference and check if there has been a mismatch and you can correct that. Uh, the last uh, tile over there is the product status tile. And this tile shows the date that products were last downloaded. It also displays the number of products in both Amazon seller and on SIN 7. So it's really important because uh, the product download is only a one-way street. So at this point in time, SIN7 does not have uh, a cap uh, capacity to upload products from SIN7 to Amazon seller. 
because the way Amazon seller products are set up, but uh, we are definitely able to download products into Sin7. So when you click on download products, you are taken to uh, subsequent steps where if products are available, uh, are present on Amazon seller, based on the SKU code, they would be mapped between the two systems. So consider I'm selling a t-shirt on Amazon seller and the SKU code of the t-shirt is one, two, three, four. And the same uh, SKU probably is present on SIN7. So when I click on download product, it will map the SKU code 1234 between Amazon seller and SIN7. And that way you can uh, create a link which will help you update the stock information and downloads the, download the products, download the orders with the uh, correct uh, mapped SKU. Um, so, that's, that's the overview of the dashboard. And I've also provided a link uh, of our help article that talks briefly about the Amazon seller dashboard. Moving on, um, I'm gonna show you uh, what uh, happens uh, on the um, integration itself. So we'll head to our first interactive demo, which is about setup and reference. I'm just quickly gonna go out of this um, presentation mode and we'll take you to our test account. So this is Integrations 101. It's an internal Sin7 account that we use for all integration testing purposes. So here I've actually set up uh, an integration for Amazon seller and I've named that as Amazon seller webinar. So when you are um, uh, asking to, when you are asking to set up an integration for Amazon seller, you can request that uh, uh, by calling in the support line, or you can go into the app store and just uh, uh, in install that integrations. Once the integration is, is installed, it is uh, initially not connected. So to begin with, we want to connect that integrations. So how do we do that? We click on the settings cog wheel on the top right and go to the connect panel. In the connect panel, uh, we give you a link uh, on how the integration needs to be set up. So a few things are required for the integration to be set up between since seven and Amazon. So we need the seller ID, we need the marketplace ID and the MWS token. So these things can be found on Amazon and we have listed down the steps on how you can find that. So on Amazon, you can go onto settings and click on user permissions. And uh, in that section, you would find these three details. Now the developer account number for different region is listed in this help article as well. So for the purpose of this video, I've connected this integration to the North American region. And we had a seller account uh, for testing purposes for since seven, I've added those details over here. And once you do that, you just need to click on save connection settings. Once you do that, it takes you back to the dashboard and the, uh, the integration says that it's connected. So this basically tells you that now there is a link between your Amazon seller uh, connection with uh, Sin7. So that's, that's the first bit in the setup process. And this is the dashboard that I was talking about in my last slide. So these are the different activity uh, tiles. So first is the order activity. You can click on download orders to download the orders into Sin7, the order status, the stock activity, stock update status, product activity and product status. Now, going on from here, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the settings and how things actually work uh, on Amazon uh, seller. So to begin with, I would be taking you through the basic settings that are available for the Amazon seller integration. So the first bit over here is about the product settings. So it helps you download products from Amazon seller. And if this is enabled, uh, any product that is present on Amazon seller uh, would be downloaded into Sin7. The only thing that you need to do is you need to click on that download products uh, button. Uh, so let me take you back to the dashboard and uh, show you where that can be done. 
So the product status, uh, currently I've just done some testing. So you can see that uh, there are some products on Sin7, but initially what you'll do is you'll click on download products and you can either choose to import all products when you're setting up the integration, or you can click on import products created since last import. So if you've already imported products uh, uh, the first time around, and then you've added new products on Amazon seller, I would suggest you click on this link because this is a shorter query that runs in the background and imports only the newer products that have been created on Amazon seller. So if you click on import all products, it takes you, it, it runs a query on Sin7 and uh, will show you uh, a list of products that are getting downloaded into Sin7 once the query is run. So we'll keep that aside and I'll take you back to the settings page. The next uh, setting over here is how uh, the stock is updated from Sin7 to Amazon seller. So as business owners, you definitely don't want to oversell or undersell. So a correct reflection of stock uh, on these e-commerce platform is really important for any business. So this stock section over here needs to be managed properly. And Sin7 gives you various uh, tools, various uh, ways to update stock on uh, e-commerce platforms so that you manage your inventory accordingly. So the first thing is, where do you wanna get the stock levels from? So you can either get stock levels from all the branches. So in SIN7, if I take to the products page on this account, uh, so this is the testing account. So we do have a lot of branches over here. So all these branches might have different stock for different SKUs. So consider this link, it has 994 stock on SIN7. It's not the right, not the best example, actually. Let's take a different one. So yeah, so let's take this keyboard one as an example. So it has got 488 uh, available in integrations 101 uh, branch, then 416 in main branch, and 35 in San Jose branch. So if I am pushing the stock from all the branches, uh, it's going to be pushing uh, that number. But Sin7 does have an ability where you can select a branch from where you want to push the stock from. So consider you are maintaining your inventory on Sin7 just for Amazon seller, and you've got uh, your Shopify store as well. So you're differentiating these this inventory uh, on Sin7. So you can... You can actually choose. You just want to push stock from the Amazon seller integration uh, in uh, Amazon seller branch, and you can pick that branch and you can push that stock. Uh, for the uh, purpose of this video, let's keep this as all branches. And um, then you've got various stock levels to choose from. So you can either push stock available, stock on hand, stock on hand less open sales within seven days of ETD stock available plus incoming stock and so on and so forth. So what is the difference between stock on hand and stock available in Sin7? So stock on hand is basically uh, your uh, current stock on hand value, uh, but the correct reflection of stock is, base, is your stock available number because stock available would uh, reduce any open sales, which would be on the system from the stock on hand number. So consider you've got uh, 100 stock on hand for a particular SKU code, and you've got 10 open orders. So in reality, you can only sell 90 stock for that item. So if you're pushing stock on hand for that item, you potentially might oversell. But if you're pushing stock available, you're just telling your integrations that you're going to be pushing 90 instead of 100, so you don't oversell. So this is the option that you can choose. Then uh, uh, it purely depends on your business workflow, what suits you. If you want to uh, push the incoming stock, like any open purchase orders that are that you're waiting to be put into uh, your stock, you can actually uh, choose to send stock available plus incoming stock as well. So this is purely dependent on your business needs. And then you've got this buffer stock option. So this buffer stock actually helps you maintaining a buffer of uh, 
uh, starting from negative one to negative 500. If you want to uh, manage your inventory that way and you want to avoid overselling on your e-commerce platform. Then the maximum stock level a value is uh, used for products uh, that, that basically uh, tells you like if you are limiting the stock number say to 100 for a particular SKU, even if the, that stock available figure is sitting at 500, you would only be pushing 100 through the integrations. So these two settings, the buffer stock and maximum stock level cannot be used together. Either or is the uh, option over here. The next thing is uh, this auto stock sync, which is really important because uh, we don't want you to actually go on and um, click on this. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to the dashboard. We don't want you to click on these links, which helps you in update modified stock or update all stock over and over again manually. So clicking on this uh, auto stock sync helps uh, uh, the stock sync to be uh, run uh, in, in uh, a span of uh, starting from five minutes when the order is downloaded up until two hours if no order is being downloaded into SIN 7. And uh, this auto stock sync query also runs when you visit the admin page of any sales order on SIN 7. So this uh, query would automatically sync stock from uh, SIN 7 to the Amazon seller account. The next bit is the orders uh, setting over here. Now it allows you to download orders when the Amazon seller order status, and you can choose from these order status statuses. So by default, I've clicked partially shipped, shipped and canceled on, um, uh, on, on this page, but you can choose uh, according to your workflow. And this query of auto download orders, if I turn this on, uh, there's a scheduler that runs between five minutes to two hours, depending on the order volume. And you can choose uh, when to start this scheduler on a daily basis. So on the dashboard, you do not have to manually click on the download orders and uh, wait for the orders to be downloaded. If this auto download orders uh, is turned on, uh, SIN7 integration uh, checks the API to download orders from Amazon seller automatically. Uh, one thing I want to cover over here is if uh, the order is uh, cancelled on Amazon seller uh, before it has been downloaded into SIN 7, that order will not be downloaded into SIN 7. But if the order was cancelled on Amazon seller after the order was already downloaded into SIN 7, in the next uh, run for the download orders, the uh, order automatically gets voided on SIN 7. So you don't have to do anything about that. And you can also choose a default stage. Uh, so stages are basically used for reporting purposes or to give you better clarity on uh, what's gonna be happening with that order when it gets downloaded. So you can choose according to your workflow. Um, then we've got update uh, order status. So this is basically uh, the reverse of uh, download. So once the order has been dispatched on SIN 7 and you've got tracking code and the tracking uh, a carrier and the carrier and the tracking code on the order, you would want to push that information back to the Amazon seller or any integrations channel. So consider I've ordered uh, from your website and uh, you've dispatched that order through DHL and the tracking code is one, two, three, four. Uh, as a customer, you would want me uh, to have an email from you stating that your order has been fulfilled, it's on the way, and the carrier is DHL, and you can track your order by clicking on this link. So SIN7 has that capability to push that status back to Amazon seller, and uh, it, it basically, uh, we, we basically send the tracking URL and the tracking code so that uh, you can have one link that can be sent to your customer and your customer can then click on that and see where the shipment is at that present moment. So again, over here, we've got an auto update order status. So if you check this box, uh, you do not have to go back onto this dashboard and clip, uh, keep on clicking on update dispatch orders when the orders are ready. 
So by default, every five minutes to two hours, depending on the order volume, this query will run and will dispatch, uh, would update all the dispatched orders into Amazon Sella. Now, coming back, uh, coming down over here, the inventory section, uh, you can choose to auto dispatch orders that are getting downloaded from Amazon Seller. So we've got various options over here. So if you want uh, all the orders to be dispatched when they get downloaded into SIN 7, you can uh, choose either of them. Yes, yes, completed orders only, or yes, completed orders only, ignore stock. So what's the difference between it, these three? So if you choose just yes, any order that uh, is not even completed on Amazon uh, gets dispatched on SIN 7. Uh, if you choose yes, completed orders only, only the orders marked as completed on Amazon seller, when they download into SIN 7 would be dispatched automatically. The third one is completed orders only, ignore stock. This basically tells SIN 7 that even though you do not have stock to meet the sale, just dispatch this uh, uh, order and uh, ignore the stock information that you've got on SIN 7. So this basically creates an auto adjustment on SIN 7 and SIN 7 uh, uh, takes uh, Amazon seller orders as the source of truth and dispatches all the completed sales orders uh, marked in Amazon seller and dispatches them on SIN 7. And then you've got no. So if you do not want to auto dispatch orders and want to review these orders and potentially uh, uh, ship that internally uh, and then dispatch it, then you can choose no as the option. So this is the auto dispatch inventory. Uh, some of you might be selling kit items. So bill of material items. Uh, so uh, you can choose this uh, uh, option over here if you want to expand the bill of material uh, uh, on the sale order download. And uh, if you want to add an estimated time of delivery, you can either choose between the created date or the current date. So the created date would be the, the order created date from Amazon, and the current date would be your current system date uh, on since seven. So you can choose either or. Then we've got an FBA branch. So uh, on Amazon seller, uh, you might be aware that you can either fulfill by yourselves, so that is FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant orders, or it is an FBA order, which is, which is fulfilled by Amazon itself. So when you click on this, you can actually assign an FBA branch within SIN 7 uh, for reporting purposes, that these are the orders that would be uh, fulfilled by Amazon themselves. And uh, when you're reporting on those uh, orders, you can actually choose a separate branch within SIN 7 and get all those orders routed to that branch within SIN 7. Now, set uh, default 3PL status. Uh, usually, if you are uh, integrated with a third party logistic company uh, and you're dispatching uh, your FBM orders, through them, you can choose to set the default 3PL status to transfer to 3PL immediately so that when the order gets downloaded from Amazon uh, seller, you are telling your 3PL as well that, hey, uh, these uh, 10 orders have come in, kindly fulfill them, send me the uh, tracking details back so that we can update that back on Amazon seller. So this is, again, a business workflow process that you need to follow, and it uh, varies from business to business. Uh, this is a really important uh, thing, which uh, helps uh, a lot of our uh, customers, which is routing the branch by country and stock. So currently, it's chosen as no. So if I choose this as, uh, uh, if I configure the branches using this option, it tells me, it gives me a branch routing grid. So I've got all these branches on this test account and I can choose if I want to route uh, my orders based on geography. So if I uh, am getting uh, any orders from New Zealand, say uh, I can click on this uh, list and I can choose that country. So let's find where is New Zealand over here. I'm just going to save that. So any order uh, 
that my customer is placing on Amazon seller and they put their delivery address as New Zealand will get routed to this NZ warehouse branch. So it is, it gives you an ability to basically route your orders based on different geographies. Uh, considering uh, if uh, my NZ warehouse branch does not have uh, stock to meet that sale, I can check the stock uh, in my main branch. If my main branch does not have stock, I can check for another uh, branch, let's say warehouse. So it's a way on uh, uh, telling since seven, hey, uh, any orders coming from New Zealand needs to be uh, sent to the NZ warehouse branch for fulfillment. If there is no stock in the NZ warehouse branch, put that, check the stock in main branch. If there is no stock in the main branch, check the stock in warehouse. Now, uh, since New Zealand does not have state codes, uh, we, we do not have that options over here. But if you are uh, uh, selecting uh, any other country, let's say, yeah, USA in that instance. Let's find where USA is. So that's US and I go save. Then you get an option to choose the state codes within the US. So depending on the delivery address. So if uh, a customer is ordering from Mississippi, uh, in the United States, that those orders would be routed to the New Zealand warehouse branch. And you can basically do it for multiple branches that you've got on your uh, system. Moving on to the customers. So SIN7 actually does not uh, download uh, the customer details uh, on the orders. So it does not create a CRM record uh, because of the strict uh, policy from Amazon. So I'm gonna be taking you through that uh, data retention policy that we've got uh, to follow as a third party integrator with Amazon. So SIN7 does not uh, create a CRM record, uh, although we give you an option. So you can create an Amazon seller customer on your CRM and assign all those uh, orders that are getting downloaded as um, uh, to that customer. So you can actually choose a different customer over here. So for the purpose of this webinar, I've chosen it as cash customer. So any new order that gets downloaded from Amazon seller, the billing details of, so that's, that's what it is. And you can assign a CRM customer group. So you can actually just, this is just for reporting purposes. So if you've got, uh, uh, a customer group for Amazon orders. You can create a CRM customer group as Amazon and assign it, assign those orders to that CRM group. And you can also choose the payment terms. What would be the price tier? Really the base currency price tier that gets assigned to that order. Uh, and you can also select the customer GL account depending on your accounting needs. So if you want to segment uh, your Amazon orders, to a particular GL account on QBO or zero, you can choose from uh, the GL account. So we've got few GL accounts over here. So if uh, I've got uh, all my Amazon orders going to test one to three GL account segmentation on zero or QBO, I can choose that. And when I import the invoices, they'll all go into that uh, particular segment on the accounting software. Then the last bit is the account information. Here, uh, you can either uh, choose to import uh, invoices individually. So what will happen is if you choose that option, you'll have to uh, set the QBO or zero status of the invoices to do not import and then import these individually into your accounting software for reconciliation purposes but you can also choose to batch these invoices. So what happens in batch invoicing is that uh, if you've got uh, say 50 orders downloaded for a day, you can close the register, like how you do it on a cash deal uh, in your retail stores. You can close the register for that given day and uh, allow that uh, those 50 orders to be part of one single batch and import that batch into your accounting software 
to avoid uh, like mistakes if you're importing in, in individual in invoices. Uh, so as a batch, you can just have that one record stating that you've got a $5,000 sale and you can reconcile with your bank payments. Uh, and this is the default accounting status on the order. So not imported yet basically tells you that this invoice has not been imported yet. And um, order payment terms, order price tier and order GL account. So you can either assign it a different GL account or you can use the contact GL account from this field. So these are the few settings that I wanted to talk through uh, with the Amazon seller uh, demo. So I've got a few help articles in the uh, slide deck. So these, is, these are the help articles that will show you connecting to Amazon seller, Amazon seller settings, the data retention policy for Amazon orders, and then I've already taken you through the interactive demo on how uh, products are downloaded from Amazon seller, downloading orders from Amazon seller and updating stock levels in Amazon seller. So we've got some help articles to talk through them as well. And uh, yeah, so this, this is the basic overview of how the Amazon seller integration works with Sin7. Um, and uh, great. These are some contact details that uh, you can actually reach out to the support through live chat or just uh, submit a ticket through to us. So you can uh, read our help blog as well on how to log a ticket or have a chat with one of our support team members. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jen. We have a couple of questions that were submitted. So I will yep. go through those first for you. The first one is, does the integration also look at EAN numbers when downloading products? We find we get products products match even when the SKU codes are different. Yeah, so the first thing that uh, Sin7 and Amazon seller uh, links on is the SKU code. And the second bit is the barcode or the EAN information. So the answer is yes. Great. Second, when connecting Amazon EU and Amazon UK, we find when listing a merchant filled SKU on either platform, it looks, it wants to look at the stock in both Europe and UK in SIN 7. How does this work and how can we separate it? Um, I'll, I'll have to figure that out. It's, it's a, a scenario that I haven't come across personally, but I can check that for you. Uh, Marisa, it'll be great if you can pass that question through to me and the yeah. uh, detail of uh, whoever has asked this question and I can reach out to them. Great. We will get back to you on that one. Uh, next question, are there plans to import RMAs slash credit for FBA into the SIN7 Amazon integration? Since Amazon deals directly with customers on those we don't have visibility of FBA returns until we check seller central? Yeah. yeah, that's that's a great question. So at this stage, uh, Sin7 does not have the ability to download RMAs or credit notes. Uh, uh, that's, that's the Sin7 terminology of credit notes, but RMAs, we do not have that ability. Uh, I can check that uh, on the product roadmap at such at this stage, uh, I do not see that. Uh, uh, to be implemented, but I would be speaking with the uh, director of product and uh, the product manager for integrations to see if uh, this is uh, something in this is something to develop in the near future. Um, a, another question pertaining the future: um, Are there any plans um, to get an integration with eBay Marketplace? Uh, sorry, which marketplace? eBay. eBay. Correct. Uh, so we do have uh, uh, an integration with eBay Marketplace already. Uh, so uh, potentially what I can do, Marisa, if you can provide me the details uh, uh, of uh, whoever has asked this question, we do have uh, the ability to connect with the eBay Marketplace, though the uh, functionality is a bit limited at this stage, but uh, you can actually 
uh, play around, uh, install that integration and see if that fits your business needs. We will follow up on that one as well. Um, another question, can you set two different statuses for the option set default 3PL status? We want, we would want our FBM orders to be transferred to our 3PL, but not our FBA. FBA. Oh. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something we only, uh, let me check that if we put that on the setting. Um, so at this stage, I, what I'm aware of, we only have uh, the ability to do it for just a two to one level, but um, I, I think what I can do is I can uh, work with this customer on a workflow to figure out if we can uh, route the FBA orders to a different branch and by default set those orders to do not import. And then the FBM orders, we can just uh, set the default status to transfer to 3PL. So again, I can come back to you on that as well. So it's uh, uh, a workflow related question that probably we can look into as well. Awesome. We will make sure to get back to you as well. A um, Couple more questions here. Let's see. How accurate is the stock levels in Amazon Sellers Central and Sin 7? How quickly should this pull across and does it match straight away? Right. Uh, so as I mentioned, so I'll, I'll tell you what happens, right? So this is the, these are the two stock uh, update uh, queries. So one is the update recent modified stock and the second is the update all stock. Now, how we, uh, if you've chosen the order stock sync on the settings, how SIN7 uh, works is whenever an order gets downloaded from Amazon seller to SIN7, these queries will run automatically. So a scheduler is there from five minutes up until two hours. So if there are no orders that are in the pipeline to be downloaded into SIN7 from Amazon seller for say uh, the next, uh, uh, so it will start at five minutes. If there are no orders downloading, the timer will go to 10 minutes. Then if there are no orders, the timer goes to 20 minutes and it goes on till two hours. So at the two hour mark, this query will definitely run. And then the timer will reset to five minutes and then it'll check for subsequent order downloads. But if you visit uh, the admin uh, screen on any sales order within SIN7. So uh, if you go on to the admin screen over here, I'll show you uh, how that stock query would run. So I'm just visiting the admin page on this sales order. You would see that all these integrations that are on our test account, this stock uh, update query ha has been put on uh, uh, it has been put on a scheduler. So to answer your question, would it be an immediate uh, reflection of the stock numbers between SIN7 and Amazon? Uh, it depends on uh, first, uh, if the query has been run successfully on SIN7, and then uh, it depends if there is any scheduler on Amazon side, which uh, runs. So I can answer that for Shopify. So I've done some testing uh, it, it does uh, reflect pretty quickly uh, for Amazon seller as well, because the same uh, code is running in the background. So I'm assuming that it'll just uh, show uh, pretty quickly as well, unless there is some scheduler on Amazon seller, which stops the query to be shown uh, uh, easily on their, on their end. So the answer is yes, unless this stock update is always a success on since seven. Great. And then, we have time for one more question. So the last question is, how do the payments from Amazon come through? All right, so, uh, so, so the payments from Amazon, uh, uh, just to uh, clear that out, if uh, you can type that in, are you talking about the payment terms? Or should we take that offline, Marisa? Oh, I, yes, she- I can take that offline. They are talking about the payment terms. 
So the payment terms. So basically you can choose to set up the payment terms based on the customer level. So um, as you can see over here, we've got different payment terms on since seven. So if you choose a payment term uh, by default, uh, it'll just come uh, to that. If you do not want a default payment term to be applied to all Amazon orders, whatever payment term is being selected on Amazon will be uh, downloaded through the API and that'll be applied on the order itself. Fantastic. Well, that concludes our webinar today. Thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate it. Please keep a lookout for our next webinar registration for next end of next month. We look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.